Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Downton Abbey moments. So, well done to old Corbet. <laughs> this wasn't Monsieur Corbet, Your Majesty. Mrs. Patmore cooked it. In fact, it is the Downton Abbey staff who are serving you this evening. For this list, we'll be looking at this classic drama series and picking the best moments from its six season run, be they sad, happy, or anywhere in between. We'll also be including the first feature film adaptation. What's your favorite Downton moment? Ring a bell and let us know in the comments. Number 20. Mr. Bates is freed. Of all the servants downstairs, Mr. Bates and his wife Anna arguably have it the hardest, facing adversity at nearly every turn. Before Anna too would be accused of a murder she didn't commit, Bates is actually convicted of the crime in the advent of his estranged wife Vera's suspicious death. John Bates, you have been found guilty of the charge of willful murder. You will be taken from here to a place of execution, where you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead. Though our protagonists are able to reduce his sentence from death to a life sentence, things look pretty bleak as Bates is set to waste away in prison. Thankfully, Anna's staunch loyalty to her husband pays off as she proves Vera's passing is on no one's hands but her own. The scene where Anna greets a freed Bates outside the gates convinced us their love could weather any storm. Thank God. <laughs> yes, thank God. And you. Number 19. Matthew Walks Again We wish Matthew's wartime injuries were the last of his troubles, but his overcoming them certainly makes for a glimmer in an eventually tragic character. Upon his return from World War I, the family learns that an incident caused the severing of his spinal cord, meaning he'd never walk again. This is not the end of his life. Just the start of a different life. This sends Matthew into a disheartening depression. But in what would prove to be just one of multiple misdiagnoses, Matthew begins regaining sensation in his legs before instinctually rising to his feet to catch a falling Lavinia. Look out! Heavens, that was a near thing. My God. Turns out Matthew's spine wasn't nearly as damaged as previously thought. The happy occasion prompts Matthew and Lavinia to resume their engagement, even though we all knew this would only complicate things further with Mary. Excellent news. Yes. Good evening. Mary, isn't that excellent news? Just excellent. Number 18. Daisy and William's Deathbed Wedding In the same explosion that injures Matthew, so too does Downton footman William Mason receive brutal injuries. But whereas Matthews are temporary, Williams are sadly fatal. He's sent back to Downton to live out his final days, where he proposes to kitchen maid Daisy, for whom he's always held a flame. I can't. It be dishonest. Almost like cheating. But it's not cheating. We love each other, don't we? Unfortunately, Daisy's never reciprocated his feelings and thus feels conflicted as to what to do. Though it would later give her further guilt, Mrs. Patmore persuades her to go through with it. It's a tricky situation to be sure, but it all speaks to Daisy's kind-hearted nature, as their bedside nuptials just hours before William passes prove to be one of the saddest moments in the series. <laughs> Number 17. Atticus Proposes to Lady Rose Lady Rose, to us, is an underrated character, but few will deny that she and Atticus Aldridge were made for each other. Would you just look at that meat cute? You must have a very sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not for me. I, I give tea to some Russian refugees every Tuesday and Thursday. They love cake. I love cake. Oh, you can come and have some if you'd like. Whereas most couples on Downton go through long courtships and arduous relationships, Rose and Atticus prove the exception. Despite various family members' disapproval of their coupling, or rather, in spite of it, Atticus pops the question just two episodes later. The truth is that we haven't known each other very long, and they're right that there are bound to be problems. The way I see it, we both know we're going to get married in the end. We know we're right together. I suppose we do. Many could object to their speedy union, and many could be forgiven for thinking they'd never make it. But at the end of the day, this adorable couple simply knew something everyone else didn't. 
Number 16. Mrs. Drew Kidnaps Marigold there are many times when Downton Abbey feels like historical literature circa the 19th century, but never more so than during the saga of Edith's illegitimate daughter Marigold. Unable to claim her as her own, Edith has her stay at the nearby Drew Farm. Mr. Drew, would you do that for me? For you and the little girl, my lady. Yes. Oh well. Trouble is, Edith's visits aren't enough, as she decides to take Marigold back. This greatly upsets Mrs. Drew, who'd come to love the young girl as one of her own. This nice lady is your new mummy. She loves you more than anyone else could. But don't you forget that we love you too. <laughs> Everything comes to a head when Mrs. Drew absconds with Marigold during an event in town. The scene following where Mr. Drew has to talk her down is heartbreaking and makes you feel for all those involved. Surely you can't be angry when I only want to hold her close and love her as much as I can. Number 15. The Dowager Countess's Mortality While she doesn't get many storylines of her own, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone whose favorite character isn't the Dowager Countess. Oh good. I'm glad I'm a revelation and not a disappointment. She may be best known for her quick wit and wry disposition, but the most meaningful scene of hers might be a more somber one from the 2019 movie. In it, she reveals to Mary that a recent doctor's visit yielded news that she likely doesn't have long to live. I just save your tears for something sad. There's, there's nothing sad here. I have lived a privileged and an interesting life, and now it's... it's time to go. Though this would undoubtedly bring anyone down, the moment has a heartening undertone as she reassures Mary that Downton will go on under her care. You're the best of me. That will live on. Hurrah! Seriously, what's the point of a Downton movie if we can't get Maggie Smith another Oscar nomination? Number 14. Edith and Bertie's Wedding Of all the Crawley sisters, Edith has to be the most unlucky in love, as a later entry will exemplify. However, whereas other shows have failed to give characters the endings they deserve, season 6 of Downton Abbey made sure to give Edith her rightfully happily ever after. I love you, Bertie. I've been in love before, I won't pretend that I haven't. But I really do love you. <laughs> and I'll take that as a yes. While Bertie is understandably thrown for a loop when he learns of Marigold's parentage from someone other than Edith, his love for her is reaffirmed when he proposes again later on. There could be gossip. Are you ready for it? I hope to avoid it, but I'm ready if we can't. The only thing I'm not ready for is a life without you. Thankfully, despite all of Edith's poor luck, this one is for real, as she and Bertie decide to face life's future challenges together. Number 13. Robert's Ulcer Bursts Though there are a lot of shocking developments on the show, few take us quite as aback as Robert's Ulcer Incident. Obviously, we knew going into the final season that for every few characters that got happily ever afters, there could be some we had to say goodbye to in more ways than one. Which is why it was so concerning to see Robert, the ostensible lead of the show, suddenly spew up blood at the dinner table. Can't oh. we stop this beastly row? How I wish we could. <sighs> because I... I... <clears throat> I'm so sorry. While the show had previously established Robert's stomach ulcer, we still didn't expect any repercussions this dramatic. Thankfully, Robert does survive surgery, so we were granted more time with the Earl of Grantham. But we won't get that image out of our heads any time soon. You're quite pale. We'll go together. You've had a shock. I think I've had a few shocks this evening. Number 12. Thomas's Last Resort we often have a love-hate relationship with Thomas Barrow, hating him one minute for his incessant scheming, and loving him the next for his tragic status and genuine desire to be better. Thank you for your inquiry, but we wish to combine the roles of butler, chauffeur, and valet, and you seem overqualified. But please accept our best wishes for the future. What future? It's the mark of a truly great character, so in no way did we ever want to lose him when he began to enter a deep depression. Thankfully, his sometimes frenemy Miss Baxter is able to read the signs soon enough to save Thomas from taking his own life. Have you seen Mr. Barrow? Uh, he was going in for a bath. Oh my god. 
Come with me. Despite all his needlessly destructive behavior, Thomas realizes that he has people who care about him anyway, which is beautifully exemplified in a scene wherein he and Mary are able to empathize with each other on that point. I've done sad things. I don't know why. I can't stop myself. Now I'm paying the price. Strange. I could say the same. Number 11, Cora's miscarriage. Pregnant. You need me quite so shocked. After tirelessly searching for a male heir, Lord Grantham's problems are seemingly solved when his wife Cora becomes pregnant. If the baby's a boy, he'll inherit his father's property and fortune, preserving tradition. The future of Downton Abbey is put back in jeopardy, however, when maid Sarah O'Brien intervenes. Infuriated that she might be replaced, O'Brien leaves a bar of soap for Cora to slip on. She quickly regrets this cruel deed and attempts to correct her wrongdoing, but it's too late. Cora falls and loses her unborn child. Hello, dear. If you could just wait. It's a haunting moment that left viewers stunned. To make matters worse for Lord Grantham, it turns out the baby would have been their sole son. It was a boy. Number 10, Mr. Pamuk's body. What happened? I don't know. Heart attack, I suppose, or a stroke, or... Lainey Mary is immediately drawn to Kamal Pamuk, but she's taken aback when he makes sexual advances. Despite her apprehension, the persuasive Mr. Pamuk convinces her to spend the night with him. Their passionate evening takes an unexpected turn for the worse, however. As Mary loses her virginity, Pamuk suffers a heart attack and dies in her bed. He was alive and suddenly he cried out and then he was dead. But why was he here at all? To preserve the eldest Crawley daughter's reputation, her mother and her loyal servant Anna help move the body. <laughs> The three return Pamuk to his room, although the scullery maid, Daisy, catches them in the act. This was the first of many scandals that befell Downton Abbey, and it offered a glimpse of how jaw-droppingly good the series would become, while working in some dark humor. I couldn't. It's not possible. If you don't, we will figure in a scandal of such magnitude it will never be forgotten until long after we're both dead. Number 9. Edith Stands Up to Mary as much as we love Mary, her attitude towards Edith is far from healthy. She's often meddled with or outright disapproved of Edith's life out of nothing more than spite. While there's always been friction between the two sisters, things come to a head when Mary crosses the line by revealing Edith's illegitimate daughter to Bertie Pelham. And I admire you, Bertie. Not everyone would accept Edith's past. Mary, don't. What do you mean? Well, you must have told him. You couldn't accept him without telling him. Tell me what? About Marigold, who she really is. Having absolutely had it this time with Mary's venom, Edith lets her have everything she has coming, and uses a certain word seldom used by early 20th century ladies. I know you. I know you to be a nasty, jealous, scheming bitch. Now listen, you pathetic- You're a bitch! And not content with ruining your own life, you're determined to ruin mine. Still, theirs being one of the most important relationships on the show, we were immensely glad they were able to begin patching things up by the episode's end. Until at last, our shared memories will mean more than our mutual dislike. Number 8. Mr. Carson's Proposal I do want to be stuck with you. Although they keep their relationship strictly professional for most of the series, Mr. Carson and Mrs. Hughes have always felt like a married couple. As the butler and head housekeeper at Downton Abbey, they've developed an intense and meaningful bond while maintaining order in the household. It was positively uplifting when they walked along the beach together, but we'd have to wait another year for Carson to finally pop the question. Having purchased a property in their names, Carson confesses his feelings for Mrs. Hughes and asks for her hand in marriage. I'm not convinced I can be hearing this right. You are if you think I'm asking you to marry me. She's quick to accept the old boobies overdue proposal, practically moving them both to tears of joy. After so much will-they-won't-they they tension, this sentimental declaration of love couldn't have been more satisfying. Of course I'll marry you, you old booby. I thought you'd never ask. Number 7. Edith Left at the Altar Well, fashionably late is one thing. It's not easy being the middle Crawley daughter. 
Every time it looks like Edith is going to find happiness, failure and sorrow seem to be waiting around the corner instead. Case in point, her wedding day. Despite a significant age difference, Edith is keen on dedicating her life to Sir Antony Strahlin. As the bride arrives at the altar, though, Strahlin suddenly gets cold feet. Dearly beloved, we are gathered. I can't do this. Not wanting Edith to throw her life away, the elderly groom calls the wedding off. You know it's wrong. You told me so yourself several times. My dear chap. No. I never should have let her get this far. To be fair, Strahlin only had Edith's best interests at heart. But he couldn't have chosen a worse time to drop this bombshell. The audience is every bit as devastated as Edith, who just can't catch a break. <laughs> Number 6. Anna's Assault Don't be silly, let me pass. You look to me like you could use a bit of real fun points. Valet Mr. Green might seem friendly at first glance, but he shows his true colors when he attacks Anna Bates in the kitchen. Now let me buy, please. Perhaps you've forgotten why you're missing. <laughs> the head housemaid screams for help, but everyone else is preoccupied upstairs as Dame Nellie Melba sings. Following the assault, Anna is left in pieces while Mr. Green resumes his normal duties. We must tell someone. No, no, no. But you have to tell Mr. Bates. Him least of all. This was easily the most controversial subject Downton Abbey ever tackled, with many critics arguing that the show had gone too far. While Anna's assault is undeniably brutal, it's also a shocking moment from the series that we won't soon forget. Number 5. Bates and Anna's Wedding With this ring, I plight thee my truth. If there are two people at Downton Abbey that deserve to live happily ever after, it's Mr. Bates and Anna. After overcoming so much, these two finally make it to the altar where they're pronounced husband and wife. With some help from Lady Mary, Anna and Bates get to spend their wedding night in one of Downton's guest rooms. Smuggle Bates in here when everyone has gone to bed. And for heaven's sake, make sure he gets the right room. Their evening together is nothing short of heavenly, but this emotional roller coaster ride is still far from over. Shortly after secretly tying the knot, Bates is arrested for allegedly murdering his ex wife. You are under arrest on the charge of willful murder. While we know their story ultimately ends well, it's disheartening all the same to see their happiness interrupted in any way. Number 4. I'd Wait Forever. But you haven't come up with an answer yet, have you? Not yet, I'm afraid. Along with Bates and Anna, Lady Sybil and Tom Branson were easily among our favorite couples on Downton Abbey. Despite coming from different classes, the youngest Crawley daughter and the family chauffeur share instant chemistry. And I won't always be a chauffeur. They'd gladly give up everything to be with each other, although World War I stands in their way. When Tom proposes marriage, Sybil holds off on giving him an answer until the war is over. She asks Tom for a little more time to consider his offer, to which he replies, I'd wait forever. While this exchange is brief and simple, it says so much about the sincere connection between these two characters. Number 3. Matthew's Death Life is strange, isn't it? In so many different ways. Mary and Matthew's relationship certainly had its ups and downs over the years, but Downton's primary couple reaches the pinnacle of happiness upon welcoming a baby boy into the world. Now that Lord Grantham has two heirs, it appears everything will work out for the Crawley family. Unfortunately, this joyous occasion is followed by tragedy, as Matthew dies in a car crash on the way home. While the show had killed off major characters before, the idea of Matthew dying was considered unthinkable by audiences and was received by fans with anger, shock, and profound sadness. This twist was a major game changer, showing the Crawleys that nothing lasts forever. Number 2. Lady Sybil's Death Oh my god. I need to How busy! Oh, darling, all you need to do is rest. Part of what made Matthew's death so traumatic was that viewers were still coping with the loss of Lady Sybil. Help her! Help her, please! What's happening? She can't breathe. In addition to being Lord and Lady Grantham's youngest daughter, Sybil was arguably the most modern and spirited Crawley. After marrying Branson and giving birth to a baby girl, Sybil's future seemed brighter than ever. Oh my darling. I do love you so much. <laughs>
Her happiness was short-lived, though, as she begins convulsing and suffers one of the show's most untimely deaths. Watching Sybil take her last breath is gut-wrenching, to say the least. <laughs> as the family surrounds her deathbed, the audience is left at a complete loss for words. Adding to the grief, Sybil's death could have been prevented had her father listened to Dr. Clarkson and taken her to the hospital. But Sir Philip and your father knew better and now she's dead. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Marry Me Mary You're really going to America? Downton Abbey was fearless when it came to breaking our hearts, but it was also never afraid to be utterly romantic. Ever since Mary and Matthew met, we wanted nothing more than to see them together. It was especially touching when Matthew returned home from war and joined Mary in a duet. I would say such wonderful things to you. There would be such wonderful things. But nothing can top this elegant proposal. On a picturesque Christmas night, Matthew and Mary lay all their cards on the table. Deciding to forgive and forget, Matthew asks Mary for her hand in marriage. Mary is eager to accept, although she is adamant that Matthew gets down on one knee first. You must say it properly. I won't answer unless you kneel down and everything. This scene can only be described as enchanting, and is Downton Abbey at its finest. Lady Mary Crawley. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Yes. <sighs> do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.